Biggity swooty, I'm coming for that booty. I'm not, I'm just looking for books. Hello everybody. It's been a really long day and this is gonna be a really long video. So let's get this party started. Welcome to the September wrap up. I read a lot of books this month. I did the Avatar The Last Airbender readathon and I had to read about nine books. So I read we're gonna get to that, you know? We're gonna get to that. I'm jumping ahead. So, I'm gonna do a couple of the books that weren't a part of the readathon. I read A Crash of Fate, the book that's about the land of Galaxy's Edge, and I really liked it. It was really cute, really romantic. Did it really have anything to do with the land? Not really, but it was adorable nonetheless, and I'm really glad I was able to finish it before I got to go on my trip to Florida because I didn't want to carry it with me everywhere. By the way, the land in Florida and the one in California, completely the same except for the paint. It was really cool to read about it and then go and experience it. And I know there's another book that is about Galaxy's Edge as well, but I don't, I haven't read that yet and I don't plan on reading it anytime soon. I have a lot still to read, so we'll get there. The next book that I read is actually a part of one of the books I did for the Readathon. Um, it is a collection of novellas from the Dorothy Must Die series. It is volume one of the novellas and it has three stories in there. There's um, there's No Place Like Oz, which takes from takes place from Dorothy's perspective about going back to Kansas and then wanting to return to Oz and basically how her character ends up where she does in the first book. The second novella is from the perspective of one of Dorothy's maids in the Emerald City. And then the last novella is about the Wizard of Oz and what happens to him after he takes off in that hot air balloon. So I found those really interesting. I think I gave those five stars because I just ripped right through those. I ripped right through the audiobook. Thanks Libby. Shout out to Libby for letting me check that out. I started a book and I DNF'd it. It's called um, Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows. It was really funny and it was really cute. But I had a trigger in there, and it's not a normal trigger for people. It's it was it's a name trigger. I still haven't really gotten to a place where I can deal with it, so I just was like, you know what, I'm not gonna do this, and I DNF'd it. But I highly recommend it for anybody who doesn't have that problem. It seems really funny and is really entertaining, and I think I got through the third of the way before I got to the love interest, and they gave the name for him, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> Return. I'm not gonna read that anymore. Now we're gonna get into the readathon stuff. Ah, as you can see, I am Earth Kingdom, and on the back it has Toph's name. Oh, Toph. She's my favorite character. I'm not necessarily Earth Kingdom, but she's my favorite, so that's why I got this. I do what I want. I'm an adult. I do what I want. I'm surrounded by toys. I do what I want. Anyway, for the Fire Nation portion of the challenge. They were Zuko, you had to give a book a second chance, and then Azula, you had to read a book with an interesting villain. So for the Zuko part, I picked Wicked by Gregory Maguire, and I had to give this book a second chance. So really, this was a third chance. I've tried to read this book three times now. The first time was when I went to go see the musical for the first time. Second time, same thing, I went to go see it again, and then third time was for this readathon. I got, this doesn't belong in here, get out. I got a little halfway, a little over halfway through before I was like, I, I can't, I cannot. And it's not interesting to me. The concept is completely interesting, totally and completely interesting. Like, yeah, I want to know about the life and times of about the Wicked Witch of the West, but that's not what this is about. I feel like she's barely in this, and I was about halfway through when I realized this. None of the characters are likable. It's about politics and turmoil and, like, the destruction of a society, and I'm like, That's great. I live in the world. Thank you. I can, I can just turn on the news and see it right there, but... The other thing is, is there was a lot of sexual... Things. ...happening, and I'm fine with smut. Like, give me smutty, smutty, smutness. I love it, but this was just lewd and nasty. I just kept going. Like Greg and you nasty boy. It just felt like, what sexual adventures can I get these guys into now? And I'm all for people exploring their sexualities, but this was just not my thing. It's not, 
I, I was so uncomfortable listening to it. I was listening on audio and I just, <sighs> it just made me so uncomfortable. And there's just like, it's very detailed. The sex scenes were there to move the plot along, then that would make sense. But it wasn't. They were just like, there we go. And I was like, wait, why am I here 30 pages later? I'm like, we're still here. Okay, maybe it wasn't 30 pages later, but that's what it felt like. We're just gonna check that book over there. It's just gonna be donated to somebody who will appreciate it because I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize this until today, but for the next part of the Fire Nation challenge where you had to read about an interesting villain, I picked another Wizard of Oz themed book. Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page. I loved this book the first time I read it. I loved it even more the second time I read it. It's about this girl named Amy Gum, who is also from Kansas, <laughs> and she gets taken by a tornado to the land of Oz, but it is nothing like the Oz that she has read in the book, because The Wizard of Oz, the movie, and the books are a thing in her world. And she gets to Oz, and she finds out that Dorothy is kind of a crazy bitch. She's an evil dictator. The Scarecrow is like this mad genius. The Cowardly Lion is cowardly no more and he eats people's fear. Like he sucks it out of you and you're just left as this vegetable, essentially. The Tin Man is just annoying. I, he honestly doesn't do much that's really bad to me, but he's like in love with Dorothy, which just makes me feel creepy because he's known her since she's like a small little baby. I gave this five stars. I love this book. I'm going to start the next book, The Wicked Will Rise, soon. I believe there's four books in the whole series, but yeah, I really like this. The next element is for the Earth Kingdom. Hello, Earth Kingdom. The first character was Toph, and that challenge was read a book with the, ch with the chosen family trope. And I chose Wild Card by Marie Lu. This is the second book in a duology. The first book is called War Cross, and it follows this girl named Emika Chen. And she had entered a War Cross tournament, which is like a virtual reality game. And um, in the last book, everything kind of just went to hell. So in this book, she's trying to figure out how to stop the world from being mind controlled through this virtual reality with the help of her friends. She doesn't really have a family. Her father died of cancer when she was really young. My husband is not a fan of Marie Lu. He feels really burned by the Prodigy books. And so he was really wary of me reading this duology, but I loved both books. The first book was definitely more action packed than this one. This one was definitely, I feel like more romance driven, but it didn't deter from the main goal, from the main plot, and honestly some parts of it broke my heart. So I gave this, I want to say four and a half stars, but I had to rate it four stars on Goodreads. Just because the romance was like, I like you, but I kind of don't want you. This was really good. <clears throat> I've never read the Prodigy series because my husband just was not for it. But yeah, I really like this and I really want to reread these. But I have so many books to read. For the next part of the Earth Kingdom section, the character was Suki, and the challenge was to read a book with a beautiful cover. I think I read this book in like a day. It's Autobiography by Christina Lauren. Fun fact, I didn't know Christina Lauren was two people. That is the first names of both of the authors. They are Christina Hobbs and Lauren Billings. So that is their pen name, and I didn't know that, and I feel like a ding-dong. Anyway, Autobiography follows Tanner Scott, who was an open bisexual in California, and his family moved to Utah, where everybody's a Mormon, and everybody loves the Church of Latter-day Saints. Now, I'm a terrible person, and I kept thinking about the musical The Book of Mormon when I was reading this book, and um, I realized how much I didn't know. Tanner ends up falling in love with the Latter-day Saints golden boy, Sebastian. And little does he know that Sebastian's in love with him too. And it's really heart-wrenching. Heart-wrenching and so good and so beautifully written. I gave this book five stars. I read it in a day. It was fantastic. It was great. I wish I picked it up <laughs> much sooner, but I'm glad this readathon came along so I was able to get through this. I it's adorable. Please read this book. The next part of the readathon is Water Tribe. I did not do that as well as Sokka. The first character is Katara 
and under her name you had to read a childhood favorite and I picked Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by JK Rowling 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 I always say Rowling because Row was right there I like to go Rowling you should just look up a Harry Potter musical by Team Star Kid and that'll just give you the whole plot and you're done and also I'd like to say I am so impressed with how well written these books are and how many clues she gives to how things are going to turn out in the end and I was just reading this and I was like boo, 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 my mind is blown anyway five stars I definitely did not cry at the end next character is Sokka and the challenge was to read a book with interesting world building and I picked this giant book Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi I have a lot of feelings about this book. I really liked it. The world building was just so good. The writing was like hit or miss sometimes. I never realized how much authors describe cute boys as broad shouldered until I read this book. And now I hear it in other books and I'm like, they're broad shouldered, but they have sinewy arms. How does that work? This book is 500 pages. 500. I feel like maybe 150 of those pages could have been cut out and then we would have gotten the same idea. But the world building is great. The mythology is great. I don't even know if I have a favorite character, but I know that I was interested enough in the world to want to read a sequel when that comes out. And also I kept imagining it as a film, which is why I wanted to pick it up in the first place because Lucasfilm picked it up as its first non-Star Wars film. So yeah, if you are really into world building, integrating other cultures it just it's great i gave it four stars because i couldn't give it three and a half stars on goodreads last but certainly not least the air nomads that's what i'm a part of but i think i am too selfish to be an air nomad but anyway for the first character it's ang the challenge for ang was to read a happy and hopeful book and i chose the 12 days of dash and lily by Rachel Cohen and David Levithan. This is the sequel to Dash and Lily's Book of Dares and that's where Dash and Lily first meet each other and fall in love through a cute little scavenger hunt and this is a year later after the cuteness has kind of subsided and Lily's having some real problems. She's normally just like a ray of sunshine. Her grandfather whom she loves very much just had a heart attack and She's feeling really down because she doesn't really know much else, like what else she can do because they want to move him into a home and she doesn't want to do that. And she's just really scared that anything, any big changes that'll come to him will just make him sad and pass sooner, I guess, for lack of better words. But Dash comes to the rescue and he's normally a really cynical guy and it's just really cute, really helpful. I really liked it a lot. I also read this in a couple of hours. I also annotated this, but honestly, I can't remember how I did it or how it worked. So this is, I, I tried. The effort was made. The next character is Appa. Mm, yip yip. And the challenge for Appa was a book with a lovable pet. I picked Double Book for Death by Allie Brandon and when I first started it I didn't know if the pet in this was going to be lovable. This book is about a woman who has inherited a small independent bookstore in New York City and she is having her first real big event. An author who has penned the wildly famous Haunted High series basically like Twilight but with ghosts I, my, my guess is and the author is mysteriously murdered and the, the mystery definitely kept me guessing because I kept thinking, oh my gosh, it's this. Oh my gosh, it's that. But Hamlet, that's the name of this little kitty right here. He is the mascot of this bookstore and he helps solve the murder, which is exactly what I wanted, but still wasn't really expecting. Because you're like, okay, Mandy, like cats, cats can't solve murders. Well, well. If you love cats and if you own cats, you would read this book and be like, my cat would totally do that. Like he found a clue, he, Hamlet dug through the trash and he accidentally found a clue and it was a little balled up piece of paper with a murder note on it. And he was batting it around and they were like, Hamlet, stop it. And then they pick it up and they're like, oh my gosh, Hamlet, you found a clue. 
And he also has this really totally cat-like habit of going up to the bookshelves and knocking books off. And he would knock off like in cold blood or like that's not true or whatever. And it like it would be it would be pertaining to like whatever conversation they were having. So I have a firm belief that my cat can speak English. Or she at least understand English. So this book thoroughly entertained me. I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to read more of them because I just loved Hamlet so much. He's such a sassy little kitty. And you love him. Little black cat. The last book, which was the group book, and that would tack on a third challenge to each different element. Why is English so hard for me? The Rise of Kyoshi by F.C. Lee, also with Avatar co-creator Michael Dante DiMartino. He has this whole little intro, little foreword, you know, it's an essay, about how well it integrated this book is into the lore of Avatar The Last Airbender and I've always been the most interested in Kyoshi just because they bring her up so much in the show and she lived the longest and she just seems like the most fiery to me and she battles with metal fans and a metal headdress like come on so good and reading the book I read this I want to say in a day and a half it's 400 pages I give it five stars I can't wait for a sequel there's supposed to be a sequel and it just made me excited about Avatar again. And I, I felt like I was watching the show, but with new characters. And my cabbages was even in there. He's, I want to say, near the beginning. So if you like the show, or even if you're mildly interested in the show, but you want a strong female character, that ends the book portion of this video. I'm going to talk a little bit about some movies that I saw. One of the first movies I saw this month was... It part one um, and if you don't know it is a book written by Stephen King and it's like she thick I also read the book I hate the book but I read the book I mean I don't hate the book there's just one part of it that I don't like and spoilers 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 um, there's a part of the book where one of the girls kind of gives herself to her friends to eliminate the childhood innocence that's kind of what Stephen King was going for and originally in this brand new remake of it they were going to include that scene but they took it out thank goodness and also I grew up with the tv miniseries with Tim Curry and I unabashedly love that one I'm not even gonna lie and there's a lot more practical effects and I felt like this new one really relied on special effects and it was just boring and it was so long and I can't believe it was a part two which I'm still gonna go see because I hate myself but yeah another movie on the flip side of things that I saw this month was Downton Abbey and I'm a huge Downton Abbey fan and I one of the reasons is because it's not based on a book so like it's so good that I kind of wish that it was but I also love being able to see it in a visual setting so the whole show is on Amazon Prime if you have that and I highly recommend it if you don't really like 1920s era kind of thing. Um, if you like the movie Gosford Park, it's essentially the same kind of idea. But also Maggie Smith is a part of Downton Abbey and she was in Harry Potter and she's just the sassiest and the greatest and I love her. Well that completes this video. Thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry it's so long but I hope I'll see you next time. That was like a finger gun and a half. We, we trying. We trying.